This is video five of the algorithm for the psychopharmacology of acute bipolar mania. And in this video, we are going to discuss the part of the flowchart that is concerned with people with classic mania, not mixed. And our recommendation for the first drug to use for them for their acute mania is lithium, not a second generation antipsychotic or valproate, which are so commonly used in clinical practice. Why do we pick lithium first? First of all, it's the only mood stabilizer with FDA-approved monotherapy maintenance efficacy for mania and depression. And as you may recall from video one, we put great importance on choosing medication for mania that's also going to work for preventing future manias and especially future depressions. And lithium is the only mood stabilizer with FDA approval for all those uses. It's also the only bipolar med effective for suicide risk, which is a huge issue in bipolar disorder. It's better than valproate, olanzapine, and quetiapine for other self-harm and unintentional injury, according to some studies cited here. And lithium is also the only medication we have for bipolar disorder with clear neuroprotective effects it actually slows or may even arrest and reverse some of the cortical gray shrinkage that occurs over years from bipolar disorder. Now, there's more advantages. I haven't listed all of them. Patients on lithium monotherapy in three large community surveys were less likely to need any med changes compared to all other regimens. We have three major surveys of people in the community, how they're doing, what are they on, with their bipolar. And lithium stands out as the monotherapy in the largest numbers. Everybody else seems to need combinations of treatment to be okay in the community. Another advantage of lithium, no evidence that it's inferior to the SGAs for psychotic mania. And in one study, it was actually better than valproate for psychotic mania. And by the way, some people have the opinion that rapid cyclers don't do so well on lithium. Well, it's just false. Lithium is just as good as the other antimanic agent for rapid cyclers. Several reviews of the literature concluded that. Now, all people do less well when they're rapid cyclers. Lithium is just not any worse than the others. They all don't work as well. Rapid cycling is a tough problem, and our treatments don't work as well for it. But I do recommend strongly getting them off antidepressants. That makes rapid cycling, it causes it and makes it worse. All right, so first choice is lithium. Now, what about the second generation antipsychotics? Risperidone and olanzapine have good efficacy. The standardized mean difference from placebo in that meta-analysis for non-mixed mania was 0.5, as I mentioned earlier, olanzapine 0.42, but neither has evidence of efficacy for depressive symptoms in bipolar depression or mixed mania. So given the priority we place on that ability, they are ranked lower. Now what about olanzapine? Olanzapine is still popular for acute mania. How does it compare with lithium in acute mania, you may want to know. What's the evidence? Well, I will propose that you have a look at this study by Shafty et al of olanzapine versus lithium in acute bipolar mania, published in Journal of Affective Disorders 2010. It was a small study, 40 patients, all women, and it was a three-week study, like most manic studies are, using the manic state rating scale. The severity of mania reduction was the outcome measure, and with lithium at a mean blood level of 0.8 milliequivalents per liter, reduced the score by 20 points whereas olanzapine at a mean dose of 20 and a half milligrams, so in other words, both the lithium and although the olanzapine were robustly dosed, the mean reduction on olanzapine was 7.6 points versus the 20 points on lithium. That was statistically significant at a 0.0002 level. Anyone believe that study listening to this lecture? Anyone believe that? Lithium could have been so much better than olanzapine when they were compared head-to-head -head in these women with mania. Well, for completeness, let's mention that there were two other studies of lithium versus olanzapine. In one of them, the olanzapine beat lithium. And in the third one, 
olanzapine had exactly the same results as lithium. So if we take all three studies, it looks like they're about the same. So that's why we argue that they are the same. Now, I also would like to go over a little data on how well does olanzapine work. For the olanzapine lovers out there, what is the evidence of how effective it is versus placebo? So in a pooled analysis of several studies of olanzapine for acute mania versus placebo, I have the results shown here. The response after three weeks, which is, again, your typical endpoint for mania studies, the percentage of patients who responded response was defined as greater than a 50% improvement in the Young Mania Rating Scale. 55% responded to olanzapine after three weeks versus placebo, 30% responded. Okay, so it was better than placebo, but it wasn't any fantastic result. We only have 55% responding after three weeks. And if you want to know how many remitted after three weeks, defined as a Young Mania Rating Scale of less than seven, only 18% remitted on olanzapine after three weeks versus 7% on placebo. So this belief in olanzapine as some kind of fantastic treatment is not supported by evidence. Placebo also works in a significant number of people. Now, what about other SGAs other than olanzapine? We have aripiprazole, paliperidone, and acenabine, acenabine that have some efficacy in mania, but lower of effect size versus placebo than the others we've already discussed. None have efficacy for bipolar depression. None of those. So that's why we don't like to use them for classic mania. They're ranked lower than risperidone, olanzapine, or lithium. Now, what about haloperidol? You may wonder why we don't have that anywhere. You haven't seen it at all so far in our algorithms for mania. Well, it is highly effective for acute mania. In that same meta-analysis, it had the largest effect size of all antimanic agents of 0.56, putting it larger than the risperidone, which is 0.5. It's 56% better than placebo rather than 50% better than placebo, which is what we had with risperidone. It was the best. But why is haloperidol unacceptable, despite having the highest efficacy for acute mania? Because haloperidol has the highest risk of inducing depression and another similar related problem, neuroleptic-induced dysphoria, versus all other antimanic agents. And those are the last things we want. We are willing to give up a little bit of efficacy to not have the patient switching into mania and hating that dysphoria side effect of being on haloperidol and stopping their meds right away, which happens so often with haloperidol. So we think it's obsolete as a treatment to use as your standard treatment and to maintain people. We could use it acutely, briefly, for IM use to quell a very severe agitated manic patient, but not as a treatment to continue for treating the mania. Now, I want to say a few more words about why we don't have Valproate first line. Why have we demoted it? First of all, we recommend against Valproate for first line use because of inferior acute efficacy. Valproate also has minimal quality evidence of efficacy for maintenance of mania, and it's not FDA approved for maintenance for mania or depression. Weight gain is more on Valproate than lithium in head to head trials. Now, we do have some small inadequate studies in acute depression. I do want to point that out. It's not totally lacking in studies, but they're small and of poor quality. So, to conclude video 5, the key points. Lithium is the first-line recommended treatment for acute classic mania. It may not have a better effect size than some antipsychotics, but it uniquely has efficacy and FDA approval for preventing future manias and depressions. Now, of all the SGAs, quetiapine comes closest to being competitive as a first-line choice with lithium. It also has a smaller effect size than some other antipsychotics, but it has strong efficacy as a treatment for bipolar depression, which in our view considerably adds to its advantages over other SGAs. Other SGAs are effective, some with high efficacy, like risperidone, which is higher than olanzapine, but also pretty high. 
but they are not effective for treating or preventing depressions. Haloperidol has the highest acute efficacy, but is the most likely mania treatment to end up with a patient switching to a depression. We recommend against valproate for first-line use because of inferior acute efficacy, lack of known maintenance efficacy for any phase of bipolar disorder.